Welcome to Italy. I just arrived here in Milan at the central station. And I'm wearing my, my Canada mask. If you know, you know. So I just arrived here in Milan at this train central station, which was originally constructed in 1906 by then King of Italy, Vittorio Emanuele. Look at the tall ceilings, it's unbelievable. Along with the first train stations to build in Paris in the 19th century, after the invention of the train, well then perceived as the cathedrals of steel and glass. This train station is a masterpiece by itself, I'd say. Wow, I'm gonna flip the camera for you guys. I mean, those train stations truly define a century, and rightfully so. They were the catalyst for Impressionism and the movement. Well, during and after the Industrial Revolution, so to speak. The Pietaria Ovest. Whatever, I don't speak uh, Italian. But this looks quite interesting to me. And here's the obligatory testing facilities. But we don't pay attention to these guys because check out these ceilings and this structure amazing so today i'm actually on a hunt for italians most modern structures and skyscrapers here in milan the, the economic center of italy well the skyscrapers here in milan are actually amongst the amongst the tallest in Europe, if you don't factor in Moscow and Istanbul, um, yeah, let's just keep rolling tape and let's see what I can find here. Uh, outside of the cathedral, ah, uh, cathedral, cathedral of steel and glass, I was saying earlier on. Cathedral, I mean, of course, train station. And welcome <laughs> to the Big Apple, they say. Well, the Big Apple of Italy. It's a beautiful day, it's the morning, around 8 a.m. And um, so, what I want to show you guys is, when you step out of the entrance hall here, the former, the former number one entrance point to the city and therefore the economic center of Italy, being Milan here, Italy's finest, richest and most modern city, the city the city actually dates back to 600 BC when it was founded by the Celtics. You step out of the um, train station and what you're greeted with is this view pretty much into the city center. And you can see all the skyscrapers already, which I'm going to tell you a little bit about now. So interestingly enough, the first building that catches your attention here on this square is this tower over here which is called the Pirelli Tower and it was built in 1960 and it's 140 no 124 meters tall and it represents the economic recovery of Italy after the devastation in World War II and yesterday because of the because of the ongoing soccer games right now in Europe and Italy it was lit up with the Italian flag, with the colors of the Italian flag. So, um, yeah, let's carry on. This area is here is called Tre Torri, which means three towers. As far as my as far as my translation skills go um, but it's cool because um, there's so much new construction going on those modern futuristic like looking buildings here there's more buildings over here being constructed right now and then of course like pretty much everywhere you can see new constructions and then those buildings I mean of course they're from big big uh, European corporations but nevertheless it's a very nice new new area 
and um, it really represents modern Italy like nothing else does. I'm really impressed I gotta say, I wasn't expecting this at all. What is it? People doing sports outdoors or something? Preparing for a marathon? Something along those lines. They all got headphones on, listening to their own music <laughs> and dancing together. What an interesting concept. And also, I gotta say, I really gotta say this. I haven't mentioned it. It's one of the most, or do I say, one of the greenest cities I've came across in Europe, actually. There's so much green spaces, so many, so many trees, st uh, streets filled with trees and um, also those workout areas that you see everywhere, it's amazing. This is why we came here actually, because I wanted to show you a little bit of the modern Italy. Because um, Milan is actually one of the most, um, how do I say that, the most uh, economically well-rounded regions in the world, not only in Europe, but actually in the world. And they're doing very, very well. And you can see it in there construction activities I have come to one of the most interesting points here in the city on our little tour here at least which is the Parco Biblioteca big green park area with lots of flowers that absolutely massively trigger my hay fever the green towers that you can see behind me they're called oh let's just walk around here so you can actually see them or see at least one of them, they're called the Bosco Verticale, which means in Italian the uh, vertical forests. And um, it's, a pair of, it's a pair of residential towers that are 100 meters tall approximately, self-sufficient with solar panels and like wastewater technology to sustain the plants also. And it's very interesting. They need no internal cooling, no nothing. And you don't need to put plants in your balcony anymore. <laughs> Let's get a closer look actually at the buildings. They symbolize the rise of Italy's economy like trees that grow up into the sky. Here in this part of town called Porta... Uh, what is it called? Porta Nuova. You can see birds flying in and out of the trees here. There's also a beehive supposed to be on the second tower. Literally small botanic gardens here. If you like nature, well you absolutely must live in a city. This is probably the place for you. Also Italy is just an amazing country to live. It's very calm. The economy up here in the north is great. The food is great, people are nice, public transport here in Milan is perfect. I kind of feel like Milan is actually the perfect city to live in Europe. I've heard people say that about Prague, say that about Vienna, but I haven't really heard anyone talk about uh, Milan if looking for a new city to settle in. There you go. Then I'm signing off. I'll see you in the next video, guys.